My last workshop only took a few days to complete. It had a workbench, some bike storage, a tool wall, and all the little things that made it unique. But this new garage is, to be honest, a little overwhelming to get started on. So we'll need to divide this project into three videos, starting today with the workbench in Bay 1. I figure we only need half a bay for this, which gives us a lot of breathing room to get creative. The headroom in particular opens up a lot of options. You see, this garage has high ceilings designed to accommodate automotive lifts, and it would be nice to put some of that vertical space to use. So I'm thinking we can use the workbench as a catwalk, and hang bicycles way up on the wall where we'd normally not be able to reach. To get on top of the workbench to load bikes may require some stairs, or maybe a ramp, and possibly a booter. For fear of this devolving into a full-blown garage skate park, I'm making a concerted effort to retain a level of practicality here. If we leave the backside of the ramps open, they could be used to store large unsightly things, like lumber, my shop vac, and tarps. This sliver of functionality will give us full license to squander half this bay on something absurd. Either this ends up being a great idea, or a time-consuming and expensive mistake. I guess there's only one way to find out. First things first, the workbenches, of which there will be two. The first one will be 10 feet wide and 3 feet deep, with a shelf underneath just like my last bench. Since we'll be walking and even riding on these benches, I'm spacing the supports closer than would be required for general bike maintenance. And this bench will have a total of 6 legs, each with one 2x4 running the full height of the bench, and a set of blocks carefully spaced to support the outer frames of the bench top and shelf. They say you should measure twice and cut once. I tend to measure the wrong thing twice and cut that once. But if it weren't for mistakes, we wouldn't be here doing any of this. In fact, given enough mistakes, you can accomplish anything. One down, one to go. So we can store large items underneath the ramps, I'm leaving this bench open with no shelf, so we'll need to add some braces to the legs to stiffen them up. Once this bench is in position, I should have a nice L-shaped workspace, with plenty of room for a bike stand and lots of bins underneath. But we won't get into any of that until next week. For now, we have some ramps to build. I'll be referring to this ramp as a wedge, and it has a dual purpose. The first is for transporting bikes to and from storage, and the second is for landing on. For that reason, I'm trying to strike a balance between it being mellow enough to walk up and down, and steep enough to act as a functional landing. The rise is 3 feet, just like the workbench, so I settled on a run of 10 feet. If this ramp were at a public skate park, I'd probably use heavier lumber and more layers of it. But for our purposes, 3 quarter inch plywood and a bunch of 2x4s is going to be more than strong enough. I'm more worried about the drywall to the left of it, which we'll need to armor at some point. But as we discuss the slope of this ramp and my choice of materials, you're probably thinking, where on earth would you launch from to land on that? Before I ever put my pencil to graph paper, Kevin and I stood around the garage for hours contemplating what would stand here. In fact, we seriously entertained the idea of a foam pit the size of this entire bay. 
but after consulting with Phil on the matter, I decided it wasn't a smart use of space. Instead, we settled on a four foot quarter pipe. To draw the transition, we're making a radius six feet from the base of the ramp. At only four feet tall, a quarter pipe will rarely, if ever, be an actual quarter of a pipe. It's more like a fifth of a pipe, but that's still steep enough to send you straight up in the air, which is exactly what we want this to do. If you find it hard to understand how we're actually planning on riding this thing, you're probably not alone. But before I demonstrate that, we have a bike rack to build. Given my limited height, the rack can only be mounted as high as I can reach, but that's still plenty of headroom for working on the bench. The construction is simple. Install five hooks in a 2x4 and mount it to the beams in the wall. That would be enough to hang bikes by itself, but I'm also mounting two additional 2x4s for the tires to rest on. Having the bikes way up on the wall looks really cool, and one of the hooks is oversized to accommodate my fat tire bike, which is still working great with baby oil on the brakes. Like I said, we have a lot of work to do here to get this shop operational, but this is the overall layout complete with storage and lots of bench space. All my tools are still in boxes, and my trail bike is still packed up from the Whistler trip. But before we unpack any of this stuff, it's time to give this thing a proper test. It's tight, we knew that would be the case from the start. But that hasn't stopped us in the past. We need a drama bed up here. None of these guys have ridden much skate park, so this quarter to wedge is quite the novelty. But whether you're on a BMX, a dirt jump bike, or anything in between, Riding ramps is always about sessioning. To session something is to get creative and exhaust all the different ways you can ride it. As your skills improve, so too do your options. But skill is less important than you might think. When you watch someone hit the pavement repeatedly for 40 minutes, it's hard not to share their excitement when they finally come out victorious. Yeah, I don't care if they're attempting a triple backflip or a bunny hop. Like a puppy learning to climb stairs, something relatively basic can be exciting when you witness the struggle that led up to it. And tonight, on my 24-inch red line, I'm chasing a win of my own. Yeah, I think I can get it. <laughs> this 360 has been on my mind since before we even finished this thing. I gotta go a little faster and a little higher. If it was a mistake devoting half a bay to this booter bench, then it's a mistake I'd be glad to make again. The storage underneath is going to come in handy, and there's still a massive work area behind it that we have yet to build out. 
I hope you enjoyed this video because we're going to be spending a lot of time in here over the next two weeks. We still need to move all my stuff in here and build all the little things that make it function as a workshop. Maybe during that time I'll attempt to 540 this thing. Until then, hang tight. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. What's a fast plant? Like hopping off one foot with the bike in the air and hopping back to the bike. Never tried that before.